Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oscar wanted to say something, too. What was it, Oscar? Have a rotten day. <laughs> oh, what a grouch. Carol and Debbie Spinney. Hi. Thanks Thank for coming. Welcome to Northampton and the Academy of Music Theater. Uh, is this your first time to Northampton? No. Well, the first time that really means anything. <laughs> <laughs> the last time we came, we were looking for a toy store. Uh, Carol collects trains, or used to anyway, and we, we, did we find the train store? No, they had moved from the side street to somewhere, we found out later they'd moved downtown. We just wish they had put a sign up that say, we moved <laughs> <'Cause> we, to <laughs> Main Street. We were looking over. all over. <laughs> and we didn't yeah. find it, so, no. so we I never don't know really if did. it's still there or not. But yeah. anyway. but well, welcome beautiful. back. Yeah, and this theater is magnificent. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. So, so the audience has submitted a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> I have a couple of my own, but uh, okay. let's just dive right in if you're, sure. if you're game. We're ready. Okay. Let's see. Carol, what would you say to artists, be they puppeteers, poets, or painters, who are struggling to make a living? I'd say that you get a lot of rejection because people don't know where you're at. But uh, gradually, if you hold out, sooner or later, somebody may notice and say, look at that. Do you see what's really in there? And, and then you can uh, just, in other words, don't, don't give up easily. Uh, there are people who have cried once or twice and they give it up. They might be the person that would have been famous. Yeah, just don't get discouraged. Excellent. I had a lot of, uh, uh, before I ever found the job, meeting Jim Henson and uh, getting this, this job. I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for that. And uh, I've, one of the questions is people might ask is, how do I make it in, in puppetry? Puppeteers of America, join them. You'll find it on the internet. Yeah, surround yourself with what you're interested in and you know, you just get the best people around you and you learn a lot and you know, you're kind of in the right place at the right time like Carol was. You know, when Jim was sitting like right about there in an, you know, in an auditorium and doing his show and like you saw in the movie, it was a disaster, but that was good because Jim really appreciated how he handled it. So you just, was you it, just was do it, it. Was it Sunday last week? We yeah, were last week we, we went to Salt Lake City. Uh, That's where I really got the job in the first place. Yeah. There's even a cartoon of the building we were in yeah. called Kingsbury Hall. And uh, yeah. we, I was in it and they said, this is where you got the, did the show, where you got the job with Jim Henson. And I didn't even know I was going to that. Yeah. So it was wow. kind of exciting. We, were, we knew we were going to Salt Lake, said, but so we didn't Big know Bird we were going said, to that theater. I was born right in this place. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he, and then he points out and he goes, and you were sitting right where Jim Henson was. And then the lady was like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> so it was very cool. <laughs> so I have uh, another audience question. Have you gone back to a high school reunion? And what was it like, if you did? You did. I went to uh, a few. Yeah. And, um, Not recently, but you did go to a few. Yeah, and I, I... And all those bullies were like, hey, remember when we were pals when we were in high school? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I did go to a lot of them. It wasn't yeah. much fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A little satisfaction there. How about this? Not that I would expect you to pick a favorite, but if maybe the, your first memory... Who was your favorite guest star or someone you were really fond of on Sesame Street? A good, I know that real good memory. Waylon? Waylon, yeah. Waylon Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> was he, I, I didn't just meet him on Sesame Street. If you have seen um, Big Bird on uh, Follow That Bird, uh, he, when he got picked up by the, he was hitchhiking, hoping to get back in about three hours. <laughs> he was in Kentucky or someplace. No, Illinois. Know. Ocean View. Ocean Illinois. View. <laughs> Which makes no sense hard at all. To <laughs> hard to see the ocean from there. Were you, were you good friends with Waylon and his family before That's that? That's when I became friends before with that? him. Before that? No. I, no. Uh, but uh, he played the turkey truck, truck driver. Yeah. 
And uh, I, I sat for two days in a truck that had been altered to have a roof higher than the normal roof because I was sitting on the floor with my right hand holding up the bird and uh, it was just his top feathers just cleared the roof. And uh, he, I, he and I spent two days going back and forth on this thing. They'd take another shot. We're going to take another thing and we're going to play part of the music. It ain't no road too long. <laughs> I, I was never had done country singing before, and uh, I, they didn't ask me to do any more either. <laughs> but we became really, really close friends with Waylon and his wife, Jessie, and you know spent many years just traveling with them. And they're probably our closest, next to Jim, you know, who's very special to us. Uh, Waylon was probably our closest showbiz friend that we got to meet. Let me get this straight: your two best friends were Jim Henson and Waylon Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you meet these people, you know. And you, Interviews over. If no, they're was, nice, no. you like them. Uh, we feel very privileged. <laughs> uh, serious question. Uh, can you tell us what Mr. Hooper was like and how his loss affected yourself and the show? Yeah, well, you know, Will Lee was a very serious theater guy. He'd always done theater, and he'd been blackballed by the House of Un-American Activities Association, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the days, it was very dark days in Congress and all. And uh, we were fearing the Russians and all. And uh, so uh, he was blackballed, and he had trouble getting work for years, because they said he was a communist. He wasn't. A, if he's a communist, I'll tell you, you'd hope a lot of guys like him were living in your neighborhood. He wasn't any common. He wouldn't try to affect your life or t tell you uh, that we're going to spy on you. Uh, he was just a wonderful man. Those are bad days. But Did anyway, he, he, uh, he was the man like, who actually, uh, you've heard of James Earl Jones. Oh, he, I think. <laughs> he was the reason why James Earl Jones, you know him, because James didn't want to become an actor because he said, I can't, I'm a stutterer, and I, I stutter so much, I can't act. And he said, James, I've watched you, and every, if you know your lines, you never have stuttered. So you can be an actor, just learn your lines, and just go in for, for, forward. And he did, and of course we know him. He was the voice of, I am your father. <laughs> and many other things. And many others. This yeah. is CNN. Yeah. Did, <laughs> did uh, Big Bird no, ever wondering. get Mr. Hooper's name right? Uh, <laughs> no, at one time he even went, uh, says, Good morning, Mr. Looper. He, he said, Good morning, Mr. Cunningham. Oh, gee, I wasn't even close. <laughs> <laughs> he was wonderful. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, how has Sesame Street changed in the last, say, 10 or 15 years? Well, we started out as a show who was a new idea put together that the teaching could be done with television. And I think that Joan Cooney, uh, who, who really was the most masterful creator of the show, there were many others she brought into her fold, and um, she was just amazing. And she still works there. She's 84 years old. She comes in every day and works, yeah. and which is amazing since she doesn't have a real position except for the, the founder of the show. She's the mommy of Sesame Street. I caught when Big Bird sees her, she says, "Oh, look, mommy's here." <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> has changed though. But it I has mean... changed. It was experimental television. We we do it would change as the time has changed, and they've always tried to. Uh, be uh, adjusting to what America yeah. is. I mean, they, they research everything they do on Sesame Street, so whatever is current, that's what they're into, you know, finding out how do we deal with this and show the kids and, and the whole, the family unit. And as you all probably heard, you know, recently the big deal was that 
uh, HBO came into it. And every, at first everyone was like, oh my God, you know, how do they do this? It's not PBS, which was the whole reason that people who couldn't afford all that pay TV would be able to see this. And the thing is, is it's a good thing because HBO came in with the money that was needed to produce more Sesame Street shows because they were really struggling to produce. The, the money isn't there, there aren't the grants, PBS is struggling, the whole works. And so um, what's happening is, is that HBO will give the money, the deal is for five years, to produce 36 new shows, which is great because Sesame Street was dwindling down to 18. And um, not only will they produce these shows with a good amount of money behind them, but then they're going to give the shows, not even, you know, charge PBS, they're going to give them for free to PBS. So if you have HBO, you'll see it on HBO. And if you have it on PBS, you'll see it on PBS. It's, good. it's a good so thing. It's a good it's thing. A good thing. Yes. Yeah. So Debbie, you worked for Sesame Street. I did. How did you get your job and how do we get jobs at I Sesame Street? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get it the way I got it. I, uh, I, had, I mean, I, I, well, no, I, what does that mean? I don't Tell know what that means. all about it. Wait, <laughs> take that back. <laughs> um, no, I meant that I'm thinking of it today, actually, because it's so cold out. And I remember the day that I went, I went to a, a, an employment agency in Manhattan and I was uh, 21 years old. And I, I just wanted to work in Manhattan, and they sent me to Sesame Street. I had two, two uh, interviews that day. One at this, uh, actually it was a Playtex bra factory, but uh, it was for a managerial position, which was good, good paying. And then I went to Sesame Street, and it was a, at the time it was like a secretary in the research department. And it wasn't a good paying job, but it was at Sesame Street. And it was so freezing cold, it was like it was today. And you know, here I was, a little less skinny than I am now, and in a little mini skirt and a little nothing coat and freezing, tears running down my cheeks thinking, I'm gonna die here going to this job. And I just went for the interview and I, I, I just fell in love with it and they offered me the job and the other place offered me the job and I said, I gotta work at Sesame Street. So thank God I took that yeah, job. Thank goodness, thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I say amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask cold. Big Bird a question, please? Sure. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm hiding in a funny old man's suit. <laughs> All right. You ready for this one, Big Bird? Yes, I'm ready. What is the meaning of life? Oh, God. <laughs> the meaning of life. Uh, it means... Uh, Always you're look only... on the bright side of life. <laughs> Sorry. Goodbye, I should have thought my question. I didn't think of that one. Um, I think of... Well, you know, you only get here once, so try to do a good job while you're having a lot of fun and do nice things for other people. Remember, we're all brothers and sisters. Mm. That's a very big birdie thing to say. <laughs> yes. uh, Carol, do you ever have dreams where you are in the suit? I, I do occasionally. The nice thing about the ones lately is that Jim Henson is there. Oh. And that's so nice. I, Jim is saying, listen, we got to get together. And we didn't have any scripts or anything. And <laughs> it was nothing organized, not at all like the way it is. When you go in, every moment is planned and it's carefully worked out. But um, instead, uh, he, he was there oh. and urging us on. But I, we would, I would have conf conflicts. Many things I don't have in real life. I, it's easy. I go in and there's nobody just seems to dislike me. So I <laughs> treat him nicely. Not in his dreams. <laughs> and and uh, so uh, instead, I got to do uh, what they suggested, which was to uh, keep to keep doing what I was doing. And I say, people have asked me before, how do you get into a job like with mine. And there aren't many, I guess, not many jobs like that. Yeah. But uh, if you want to do puppetry, for instance, then I suggest that you uh, um, stick to it and learn puppetry. You can learn it through the Puppeteers of America. One thing to do, you'll find it on the internet. Puppeteer, look it up. <laughs> you'll find there's local it's a real groups you could belong to. Yeah. Well, I, 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 Jim was a huge supporter of it, and he gave a lot of his money to uh, supporting other puppets. Great. And uh, a puppet show is very different than Muppets. Yeah. 
I know we have a lot of aspiring puppeteers in the audience tonight that have been reaching cool. out to us and they're really excited you're here mm -hmm. talking to them now. Uh, how about a later question? Have you ever tried to get out of a telemarketer by doing Big Bird's voice? <laughs> That's funny. No, I haven't, but I have sent some money to PBS. And I said, by the way, I am Big Bird. <laughs> and they said, yeah, right. <laughs> That's funny. But they were pleased when they found I convinced them. I sing a little bit of Abka Defki Jekyll Monopris to Rick says. <laughs> and that, once I do that, uh, they are usually pretty well convinced. <laughs> They're talking the real thing. Is Big Bird a David Bowie fan? Yes. yes, we had a wonderful time to meet David, David Bowie. He was the evil... Uh, 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 Goblin King. Goblin King. In Labyrinth, as you all know, I'm sure. Yeah, we and got to hang out with him while he was... We went over to, to hang out with Jim while he was taping Labyrinth in England. Jim was so busy. England, and finals. so we hung out with David Bowie while he was dressed as the Goblin King. Wow. I mean, it was breath... You're, like, you're pinching yourself going, I can't believe we're sitting But he right was here. a regular guy. Yeah. He wasn't like a, a, a aloof no, or anything. I met a, a famous people who were rather aloof. The real guy. And aloof isn't much fun for anybody else except the. <laughs> yeah, really. And we're uh, real space oddity fans. That was, was our favorite song, so we, we like to talk to him about that. We talked about. Uh, um, oh, an occasional dream. Occasional I don't know if you're. Dream. That's on the same album as Space Oddity, and he told us all about that. Anyway, he was great. <laughs> yeah. so he said he. He's having a good time up there with Jim right now. I'll, I'll tell bet, you that. I'll bet he is. <laughs> Aside from Big Bird and Oscar, who is your favorite Muppet? Who? Well, I guess probably they were Frank Oz characters, like uh, Grover. <laughs> Grover, I think, was my favorite. Of course, we I do love it. Snuffy. Yeah, yeah. Snuffy. <laughs> oh, go to Snuffy. He's played by Marty Robinson, also does uh, Telly. Telly Monster, yeah. and who is very much a... a very insecure, <laughs> uh, unhappy character. <laughs> <laughs> but he likes it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. How did you feel about uh, your imaginary friend Snuffleupagus becoming not imaginary anymore to everybody else? Well, the only thing I thought of that to be right, that was wrong about relieving it, revealing him that way, he actually was never imaginary. They people only misassumed it. it and, uh, I just kept missing him. <laughs> so, but he would always do things like, okay, Snuffy, you stay here. I've got, everybody is waiting for me to call them from Hooper's store. That's Looper, Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. Anyway, uh, and, and I'm going to bring them here. So you stay here. Okay, I'm going right now. Here I go. So he's standing there by himself on the, on, alone in the, in the scene, and he says, gee, my buddy Big Bird is going to bring, I'm going to meet his friends. I wonder if I look good enough. Maybe I better go home and put on a tie. And he runs away. <laughs> and so they come and there's nobody there. <laughs> Big Bird, we're really tired of you with your imaginary friend who's never here. Now, the part I don't agree with was to reveal him that day to everyone. I think they should have had, had a lot more fun with it. Bob McGrath, my dear friend, the, who is the Irish singer in the show. And uh, he uh, disbelieved in Snuffy more than anyone else. Yeah. He should have been the one to see him. Yeah. And no one believe him. <laughs> yeah. That, right? that would have been a lot of fun. We could have had fun with it for and weeks. And then each yeah. character could have done that. You yeah, know? that would have been great. Yeah. Not everybody all at once, which is like, eh. Kind of stretch it out. It would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> so on the show, Big Bird deals with all the really powerful, moving stuff, um, uh, death, uh, bullying, adoption. Uh, there was a hurricane and the nest blew away, losing your home. Why do you think, in your words, Big Bird gets all the heavy lifting on the show? <laughs> Maybe because he deals with uh, emotion, mo emotional things pretty well and interestingly. I... Uh, I, I had a lot of ex kind of experiences like that. An awful lot of comes from my own life, the things that didn't go right, and a lot of them didn't go right whenever I dealt with people. But I love people, and uh, I've met some of the loveliest people thanks to me being on that show and getting a chance to meet them. And uh, yeah. 
I remember meeting a, ch a, nun, a, a children's character who, he, he, when I was 13, and I wanted to break into television. And uh, uh, he was so, he was a guy you'd never heard of from out of Boston, Captain Carl. It was Carl DeSouz, who was one of the DJs. And uh, he, he was so nice to me. I went and spoke to him. I said, I hope to break into television. He said, uh, what do you want to do? And he told, he was just kind. And I think it's nice when somebody who has made it gives a little time of theirs to somebody who wants to do something in their field. Uh, it could be something other than television. But uh, puppetry works very well on television, particularly the Henson man method. Thank you. Uh, Big Bird. Yes. Why do you live alone? Why don't you have a roommate? <laughs> um, well, nobody, I'm just, uh, I'm just sort of squatter. <laughs> squatter. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have to have any rent. And I built the nest myself, you know, <laughs> all by myself. <laughs> And so That's I don't want any question. roommates. Uh, they've had people offered uh, other birds to try to move in on his nest. Yeah. And uh, he, w he went off to, to have a, a, a bird's eat milkshake at Hooper's store. He comes back and there's a bird living in it and tells him he can't have it. Well, of course, the denizens, the people of Sesame Street uh, made that bird understand. <laughs> <laughs> what is something you've done that scared you, but you were brave enough to do it anyway? What? Yeah, that's, right? a question. that's a good one. That's a good very question, good question. You mean Whoever like, wrote that, be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> you mean jump off the bridge when you were bungee jumping, maybe? <laughs> I, I, jumped, I did jump off the bridge. You saw that in the movie. Yeah, that yeah. scared the heck out of me, I'll tell you that. Oh but she gosh. was the one who said, I was, we, we went down to see this bridge, and there were a lot of Japanese, New Zealand. Japanese girls who were wanting to do it, but they were like, they're very shy. They're taught to always, if they giggle and laugh, like, <laughs> they cover their mouth. Like, yeah. They're so polite. But they jumped off the bridge. They jumped off the bridge, and I said, <laughs> they're having more, as much, the kind of fun I'd want to have. I want to jump off the bridge. She says, if you want to go, go you have my go. permission. You can do it. I won't hate you for doing it. Unless I should die. Yeah. So, <laughs> I filmed it. <laughs> so uh, I didn't he jump. He loved it, but it was, he was scared to death. Yeah. You yes. know? Yeah. 150 foot drop. It yeah. takes only about th less than three seconds to get to the bottom. And yeah. uh, they said, do you want to go into the water? Well, it was wintry, and so I didn't want to go in the water. I said, I'm wearing nice clothes. I'd be all <laughs> Some people get wet. dunked. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't want to be dunked. Yeah. And so, but you go down, and the nice part of it is when you go to the top, you, you float for a second before you start to fall. That's the best part of bungee jumping. You're weightless. The top yeah. of the, uh, when you're, it's yeah. the only feeling you'll ever have unless you get to one of those airplanes where they do the. <laughs> weightlessness, yeah. And yeah. You, or go uh, become an astronaut, you know. Yeah, which you saw what that was, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I thought I'd be one, but no. What, what, what are uh, Big Bird's plans for the future? Uh, hmm. Let's see. Well, let's see. We've done 46 years. <laughs> His nest is now in a tree, not outside on the ground. Okay. Uh, so I, I never saw that tree there before. I wonder how they got the roots yeah, into the that ground. Where did that tree grow? It was a big tree. <laughs> really yeah. big tree. We're hoping so, he'll get to travel someplace special, I, I suppose. I'd like to do, uh, you know, we used to do an awful lot of specials before Elmo came along. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's my, the guy who was playing it originally, who created the Elmo character, the way he is, is, is Kevin. Kevin Clash, yeah. a fabulous man. Yeah, he Elmo's was, a great character. We love Elmo, yeah. but, you know, I, I will explain about Elmo, too, though, Please. because, um, a lot of people say, you know, yes, it was a little strange at first because Big Bird was the most popular character and then Elmo came along and he became the most popular character. But Elmo appeals to younger kids than Big Bird did. And, you know, when Sesame Street first started, their audience was about mostly four to six-year-olds. And Big Bird was four and then he became six. Elmo is three. And now the kids are 
what they didn't realize at first, you can learn at one year old or less. So most of the kids who are watching now who are really serious Sesame Street kids are like one year old to three year olds. So they get these little baby characters better. And so Elmo just appeals to them better. They love Big Bird, but Elmo's like one of them. And that's just how it is, and that's great. Like, even in the movie, Carol said, I don't really want to work that much, you know? So, so Elmo can have all those days on set, and he can have a few less. So it, it's, it's a happy balance. I still want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love Elmo, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if you could share a story about uh, Kermit Love with us? Kermit Love. Yes. <laughs> Well, Kermit Love was the one who built the body of Big Bird. Yeah. The uh, head was built by Don Celine, who uh, used to work for Bert Hillstrom, and he had built a better set of puppets for uh, Bert Hillstrom, the puppeteer, who did Kukla, Fran, and Ollie. So he built it. So Jim Henson hired him. Oh, he was he had done his work for Tilstrom. So Jim said, "If you want, I give you some work." And he redesigned a lot of the Muppets into the way they look, like Ernie and Bert. Yeah. Looks so much better with uh, the beautiful work of uh, Don Celine, who became um, li the late Don Celine some time ago. But Kermit did more of the, the, the body of things. Like he, he didn't do the head, he did the Big Bird's body. And he, was, he worked for Balanchine in the, you know, in the ballet. He was a real costume person. And he, was, he looked like Santa Claus. He didn't act like Santa Claus. No, he, he was, <laughs> you heard of the Antichrist? Well, <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> no. He, he's he, sort of like he, the anti-Santa. Oh, no. <laughs> he looked like he, Santa, he, though. He was wonderful, and then some days he wasn't. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, it, it's true, but uh, he, he kept, was also, it was a case of love and hate. Because yeah. he was so creative and wonderful, it was great to work with him. Uh, and uh, He kept you from quitting that time. In the yeah. movie you saw that. I would have quit if it wasn't for him. Yeah. And I would have regretted the rest of my life. Yeah. Cause to, to I would have been working in the bra factory. <laughs> <laughs> Another question. What do you think of the new Muppet show? Well, I, the we like I, didn't, I didn't like the first episode very much. But they seem to be catching on how to, to yeah. take it. It's getting it. better and better, I think. It's not like the old one, which was a theater thing. This one is, they're supposed to be working in a theater. You don't see much theater. It's mostly a soap opera with Muppets, <laughs> which is not bad. <laughs> I Believe think me, it's, it's funny. Fun. I really yeah. think it's funny. It must put a lot of your friends to work, though. A lot of the puppeteers who work on the new Muppet Show are Sesame Street puppeteers. And even they said, you know, we were trying to figure out what, what do we do, where we go with this, and, you know, which characters are going to be the best. Um, I, it, we've, I think we've watched it each week and said, oh, this is even better and it's yeah. better. The writing is better. I think the, they're figuring out what to do with them. That's more Muppety, yeah. kind of. Yeah. The only, I, you know, to be totally honest, the only character we're kind of like, I'm not sure we like, is um, Kermit's girlfriend. Not the character, Den but the, Denise. the way the puppet looks. We, somehow, I don't know. I, I don't want to be that honest, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I just okay. think she doesn't look right. But really, we were enjoying the show. We watch it every week, and we love the guys, it's so we Tuesday want it to nights. be very, very successful. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Carol, you must have mentors. Who are your puppeteer mentors? Who, who, who got you started? Who do you look up to? Uh, well, there was a guy named Johnny Sisson from Quincy, Mass., part of near Boston. Yeah. And he... Uh, he said, why don't you join the Puppeteers of America? And I said, what's, what's that? And I, I said, there's a guild right here in Boston, and many cities and parts of the country have guilds, which is why somebody doesn't have to travel far to find one. And they can, and so an awful lot of young people join, and they, they learn, if they're really serious about being a puppeteer, if you stick with it, eventually you will make it. Okay. And Jim. And Jim, Jim, uh, Jim mentor, Hansen was right? definitely a mentor. Yeah. I've been a mentor to several kids, and one of them is a fellow named Weston Long, and he- He's he, off Broadway right now. Carol's known him since he was five. And he wrote a letter to me when he was five, not to Big Bird, like most of the ones, letters to Big Bird was like, dear Big Bird, you're my best pet friend. Please come and, and stay with me. I've got one of those right here. Um, right. <laughs> one of them is, uh, how about next Thursday? <laughs> Another one said, 
We, I just got bunk beds. You can have the top. <laughs> we get great letters, yes. So uh, I, I really feel that, uh, uh, that there are many, many people have even asked me, is this the end of puppetry because of CG? Those wonderful movies, those computer-generated animated films yeah. are fabulous. And uh, they're far better than you can draw by hand. It's just and, different, really. And uh, so he, they were, they're fabulous, but yet puppets are immediate. Speaking of that, why don't you Oh, excuse me. Is, is, uh, mm -hmm. Would it be all right if I asked Oscar some questions? Sure. Yes, I think Should he's Should I ask right Oscar here. some questions now? Leave me alone. Don't, don't pay any attention. <laughs> yeah. Good? Here, here. Welcome, Oscar. Wait a minute. Oh. We're not together. <laughs> okay. Let me hold him. Uh, Are you wait. in? No, I have to turn him. Oh. Get in there. Get, that. Get the eye control. There, it's loose. It's supposed to be loose. Yeah. There, I got it. Okay. Yeah, he was all rolled in a ball. There we go. Yeah, thanks to you. You yeah. put me in there. <laughs> you know you love it. <laughs> There's no air in that thing. Just like he likes it. <laughs> I do like it, yeah. What was the question you had for Oscar? Well, Oscar. Yeah? What is the secret thing that would make you happy? Uh, secret thing to make you happy. Well, I like trash. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do. I like trash. I, oh, I love trash. <laughs> Anything dirty or dungy. Uh, never mind, Oscar. Who asked you? <laughs> so anyway, uh, what do you like? Well, if the whole world had a lot more trash. Hey, just wait for it. It's coming along. We're big... Yeah. An another question, Oscar, is, is how does the uh, trend of recycling affect your enjoyment of trash these days? You must be seeing less of it. Well, uh, I don't see hubcaps on cars much anymore, much to my disappointment. <laughs> but you have recycling on Sesame Street. So I've been recycling all these years. I'd see a rusty hubcap beside the road, and uh, it'd fallen off some car. And so I just said that its use was a hubcap to cover the uglier part of the wheels, right? So uh, I don't use it for that. I recycle <laughs> it. I hang it over the, 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 the mantle. <laughs> Oscar, do you feel like you have a best friend on Sesame Street? Uh, yeah, well, if it's anybody, it might be uh, Maria. Or Slimy. Maria. Or Slimy. Of course, the slimy, the worm. Slimy the worm. Yeah, he's the best friend. He never disappoints you. Make friends with a worm, he'll never disappoint you. He will be a worm. Yeah. How do you feel about being uh, neighbors with an eight foot tall bird? That turkey. <laughs> hey, Oscar. Be nice. He, he, he's part of the breadwinning. I, I don't even like bread. <laughs> So, I have nothing else to say. Oh, please, I have one more question that I've been dying to ask. Right. Could you, I've seen elephants come out of your trash can. Yeah, I've yeah. heard all kinds of things like building and construction and you come from your trash can. What does it look like inside your trash can? Um, <laughs> well, I'm trying to find one word that would call it. It's a mess. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, thank you. Never thank a grouch. Yes, sir. Uh. <sighs> <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Carol, some, somebody in the audience wants to know, uh, the Jim Henson Memorial, uh, you as Big Bird, was so incredibly touching. How did you not cry while singing? How did you get through that song? Seriously. It might have been that we cried so much before yeah. the thing that, and I, there's a kind of thing you try to gather your 
whatever it is that makes you strong enough to do what you have to do. Gather that together and not break down. You can't say, let's take it from the top. Uh, you know, because it's a, you want to do it right. Particularly, this was for Jim. He was a dear friend, and I will always miss him. And uh, I, when Brian, his son, asked me if I would sing that, I was very touched. And because it was his Jim's song. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you maintain being such a positive role model? <laughs> Oscar. <laughs> I knew you weren't talking to me. Uh, well, Big Bird is just like, uh, I remember one time uh, the they, the script had Big Bird uh, hearing about a, a book that had was a little bit naughty. And I, there wasn't anything there to show what it was about what the naughtiness was. But Big Bird showed too much interest in it. And I felt that I, was, I really ran, did him wrong that day. And- uh, I don't remember that. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was before I knew you, I Oh, think. okay. <laughs> that was three years into the show. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So uh, uh, I think that Big Bird has to be, he's bad, rather innocent. And he, therefore he must remain so. And I think that that's the way we, some of the charm of children we know are so charming because they, you can, suddenly they'll say something you realize they don't know about that yet. And they don't need to know it yet. They'll find out. And uh, I really feel that his innocence is important to his being. Are, are you jealous that this movie isn't called I Am Oscar the Grouch? That's the next flick. <laughs> 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 no, I don't think so. No? No. Uh, no. Debbie, how do you feel about uh, the movie and, and it fr bringing you out of uh, behind the <laughs> scenes? <laughs> <laughs> Never work with kids or animals or grouches. That's right. You can't win. You cannot win. Uh, the movie, how do I feel about the movie? Well, it, it, it catapulted you from behind the scenes to yeah, it did. out in the limelight. Yeah, yeah, it was a total surprise. Uh, I mean, I did, had no idea that I was taking movies and pictures for 40 years for a reason. I just thought it was for us. Um, but I love it. I loved what they did. Uh, this is crazy. <laughs> Try living with this. Uh, <laughs> um, I, we love the guys who... We love the guys who did the movie. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I, I've, I've never been in front of the camera. I've always loved being behind. But when they first told me I was going to do something like this, I absolutely had to be dragged on the stage. But then I said, well, wait a second. It's just the questions are just about what I know. And I love sitting with Carol and I, even this guy. And, uh, and so, <laughs> so it's, it's good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're we're getting close to the end, and uh, I'm wondering uh, is a serious question that I think we'll, we'll ask: What will Oscar and Big Bird miss the most if uh, you and Deb say goodbye to Muppeting, puppeting, puppeteer? <laughs> We have no plans to do that. <laughs> Excellent. That's the right answer. <laughs> Don't go. No, I'm not going. We're, we're not going. Not going anywhere. This is too nice to come. And, and uh, finally, I get to talk to people who have been affected by the show through all these years. Yeah. And it's, that's this probably the, the greatest it thing really for me. Is. Thank you very much, yeah. everybody. And Carol's just signed a three-year contract with Sesame Street, which will make him 85 at the end of that one, and then he'll keep going. So. All right. That'll be 50 years. Well, Oscar, Debbie, Carol, Big Bird, thank you for the last 46 years, and I can't wait to see what happens in the thank next you. year. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.